All good things must come to an end. I love gaming on PC. It's my preferred platform. It's pretty much where all my gaming is done these days. But I was kind of thinking about why. Why do we love PC? Is it because we get to choose our own storefront? Is it because we get to build our own? Do we want to have the best graphics, the best performance? Or do we want to have more of a budget build? The choice is up to us. I think though if we're really honest with ourselves, most people gaming on PC, a big part of it is because of Steam. The convenience, the fact that it's probably the only pro consumer platform out there in gaming. I mean, if you look at Nintendo, Sony, Xbox, if you buy a game on those platforms, it sucks or it feels like a scam even. Are you really going to get a refund? Probably not. You're going to get declined. Whereas on Steam, they have the refund policy. If you play a game for two hours or less, you can always get a, a no questions asked refund. There's many other benefits like user reviews. You'll get the corrupt game publishers saying, oh, user reviews are bad, they're entitled. But the truth is I've always seen user reviews as purely and absolutely a pro for any paying customer. You find out about bad actors, games that are borderline scams, or they've got terrible performance. The user reviews will tell you instantly. I've always found too that as long as a game is working to some degree, it's usually got very positive reviews. You really have to get things wrong to wind up with negative reviews on Steam. And that almost always is on the game devs, the publishers themselves. So I love user reviews. I think, again, great tool for the customer. And it protects the paying customer so that they're not wasting their money on products that are terrible. So Steam just does a lot of things right. I haven't really gone into the features, but there's a lot of great tools within Steam that, again, are benefits to the customer. We can directly compare that with something like the Epic Game Store, which is terrible for the customer. I don't even think they've made it a secret that they loathe the customer and don't care about them. Epic's strategy was to try and do what the Xboxes and the Sonys do of the world, where they don't care about the customer either. Their focus is on making the developers happy, the studios happy. Every feature or every benefit of the Epic Store is designed to help the developers, such as the smaller cut. I believe if you put your game on Epic and it sells, you pay Epic a smaller cut than you would Steam. However, because Epic is terrible for the customer, they don't get any customers anyway. They have to try and lure people in with free games that no one cares about. But seeing, say, a platform like Epic, it does make you feel grateful for Steam that in the year 2024, we can actually have a platform that has no BS. It, it, it's not trying to rip us off, scam us at every turn. Imagine if there was like generic advertising on Steam ridiculous pop-ups and things like that. I mean, that would be very, very possible. Another company would be doing stuff like that, but Steam does not, which makes it all the more scary. What happens in a world where Steam goes away or gets acquired from a, a terrible company that would do all of the bad things that we've seen in the rest of the industry and, and goes totally anti-consumer, purely short-term profits? What happens if a company like that gets their hands on Steam? Well, a rumor started to do the rounds. It basically began with this tweet where this person says, with approximately 80 billion, Microsoft is preparing an offer of 16 billion for Valve. No stock, all cash. Now, I, I just want to make this really clear. This rumor is very likely bullshit. There's no real source for it. In fact, the community notes, fortunately, they've sort of called this person out and said there is no official confirmation of the informational journalistic articles, just a document leaked years ago showing Microsoft's interest in a possible purchase of Valve. I think I remember this. Maybe I'm misremembering, but there were a lot of Phil Spencer emails that were leaked as well, and he talked about a lot of things, maybe buying Valve. I think even buying Nintendo, he was saying, oh, I hope Nintendo put themselves up for sale one day. They'll learn that going third party is what they're meant to do, and then the reality is it's probably going to be Xbox, not Nintendo, who were going third party. So the tables have turned for, for poor old Phil there. But just seeing this rumour... I want to talk more about what could happen potentially if this was to happen, if the rumor ends up being true, even though it, it almost certainly isn't, or even if someone else bought out Steam, if, say, an Amazon or an Apple, if they had the cash to buy out Valve to insert themselves into the games market, 
What would that really mean? Because it's a very scary thought. I mean, we've already seen a lot of not so great things on PC already. I spoke about Epic, for instance. They were paying a lot of developers to make their games exclusive to the Epic Store, which feels all the more ridiculous on PC. It's one thing for consoles, but at least, say, Sony or Nintendo can say, hey, we're funding the game. The game would not exist if we didn't pay for it. And we're paying for it because we have our own platform. We're willing to invest money in games that may not even be super profitable on their own, but more to build that ecosystem to bring people in. So at least on that front, I'm not totally against exclusives if you are funding the game yourself. But something like Epic, where they were swooping in with like a, a Metro Exodus, many other games that have come out, where at the last minute they've thrown a bag of cash at a dev and said, don't go to Steam, just keep your game on our platform. Those sorts of arrangements feel really, really terrible for the customer. Because what am I as a customer getting out of that? Absolutely nothing. I have to inconvenience myself with the Epic Store. If you ignore all the allegations of, say, Chinese spyware, they're owned by a company in China, for instance, that works with the Chinese government. Even if you ignore all of that sort of stuff, it's just the inconvenience of having to download a stupid launcher. I then have my games separated. I've got some on Epic, I've got some on Steam. And then you just start to feel like you're being taken for a ride. And I just feel like if Valve was to get brought out, a lot of that pro-consumer stuff would go away very quickly. I think those refunds would go away. I reckon the user reviews, eventually there would be a time where they pull a YouTube and they pretend, oh, just like the dislike button on YouTube, which is apparently bad for everyone, user reviews are bad too because maybe there's toxic, racist, sexist who are leaving bad comments. Maybe they're calling out, say, Sweet Baby Inc., in the user reviews, and that's really bad, so we need to get rid of them completely to shut down the bigots. There'd be a fake excuse like that, when the true reason would be, we well, don't want AAA games to feel the effects of these user reviews, which might then lead to lower sales for the big games, whatever it might be, the next big EA game or something like that. But I've got to say, if that started, I do then feel because customers would start to branch out and they may not just want to use Steam anymore, they'd start to be open to other storefronts. Then you would have all these situations like Epic buy more exclusives. EA would probably get in there. The Ubisofts would get in there as well. They'd start to take their storefronts much more seriously. And you might say competition on PC is a good thing. I do agree, but I do think that that competition is only a positive thing for the customer if it's being done in good faith. So I really think it's important to make that clear. Competition on PC is a good thing. It's a little bit nuanced because so many people love Steam. And then people will use that argument, so you don't want any competition. You're happy for Steam just to be a monopoly, and you think that's a good thing. That argument goes around sometimes, and people will say, yeah, I, I love Steam. But the reason for that, I think, it's not that people don't want that competition. It's that Steam have just done such a fantastic job. Not perfect by any means, but in the context of how corrupt the game industry is sometimes, Steam absolutely is, is a good actor in the grand scheme of things. So people just love how they've been treated by Steam, how this has been consistent over years. They haven't gone massively downhill like almost every game company that is out there, whether they're a dev or they're a storefront, whatever. They've just remained a positive force. And as I said, there are some other good storefronts out there like GOG, certainly a lot more niche. I certainly think the GOG Galaxy storefront launcher is absolute crap, but the fact that it's DRM free, that is actually providing a benefit for the customer. And I think that's why some people have enjoyed it because it is giving us something, the paying customer something compared to Epic, which gives us absolutely nothing. It just tries to steal games away and force you onto the platform. So it's more about acting in good faith. I'd absolutely welcome more competitors to Steam if they were acting the same way, if they were delivering features that were improvements on Steam, if they were kind of forcing Steam to look at themselves and go, right, we've got to do better because this storefront over here, it's, it's doing great things and it's winning over customers. I think that sort of stuff would be totally fine, but I don't think we will live in that world if Valve was to get brought out by a Microsoft, whoever it would be, it would just end up really, really bad things for PC gamers. We'd see them go more and more the way of how consoles kind of look right now. 
And that's not good because I think PC gaming at the moment is in a pretty good place. It's growing. Steam is a huge part of that. People see, hey, PC gamers are getting this great experience with Steam. I'm going to move over from my PlayStation or my Xbox or whatever. Valve is such a huge part of it. And if Microsoft bought them out, that would really be the end of the good times, I think. And if we have a look at, at this tweet, there's been some replies to the person with this supposed leak, which I really don't think is true. Because, I mean, $16 billion dollars to buy Valve. That seems like a ludicrously low amount of money. If Activision cost nearly 75, 80 billion on their own, how is it that Activision could be worth something like four or five times the amount of Valve? They bought Activision for something like 76 billion, a number close to that. I mean, Valve literally controls PC gaming, essentially. Almost everyone on PC they're playing on Steam, so if you own Valve, you basically control the entire PC market. And even though this room is probably bullshit, anytime there's something shady going on with Microsoft, people are kind of drawn to it. And I think that actually says more about Microsoft themselves than it does online discourse. People will try and say, oh, everyone's negative, they hate Xbox. There is actually a reason for it. A big part of it is Microsoft, we've just become used to them not building things on their own. They just try and throw money at these problems and think that will solve it all. They've done this with all of these different developers. And it's funny because they seem to buy all these devs when they're past their prime. Like they bought Bethesda, but it felt 10 years too late. Like the time to get them was when maybe Skyrim was being made, when they were at their peak, at least in terms of popularity. Now they're releasing games like Starfield. Do you regret that purchase? I think you probably do because you've closed down Tango and, and many others. It seems like at the very least, you just wanted those IPs. I mean, it's the same for, I'd say Obsidian. I'm not very excited about Avowed. They had Fallout New Vegas 10 plus years ago. Seems like they get in when it's too little, too late. I don't think that's the case with Valve. I think they're still doing fantastic things, but it just seems on brand for them to just go, the Microsoft Xbox storefront on PC, it is total garbage. No one's using it, even with Game Pass. Maybe some people sub to Game Pass on PC when it was like a dollar a month. I did it with Halo Infinite, played it, wasn't that good, but I only spent a dollar, so lucky me, I guess. But no one uses the Xbox storefront. So rather than try and improve on it, use their hundreds of thousand plus employees to actually make a great product, they just say, oh, we'll buy Valve, that will fix the problem. It just seems like the sort of shady thing Microsoft would actually do. Again, I don't think this is real, but the reason it gains traction is it feels realistic. The good news is I don't think that Valve would ever accept that number. Maybe Microsoft did make an offer and it was just laughed out of the room because 16 billion for Valve, how is that possible? If we look at the comments, the person who made the rumor, they say, I was just inquiring about Deadlock. That's apparently Valve's new multiplayer shooter that they're making. And if it would impact how much other companies would be going for Valve this summer. I mean, that seems like a weird comment. Why would some unreleased multiplayer game be the biggest factor in buying Valve? They control PC gaming. They must be making so much money on Steam. Surely that would be the main draw, the main driver of value, not some random unreleased multiplayer game. So this person seems uninformed or something. They seem like they might just be making things up as they go. Someone says, this is a bad offer. Valve make monstrous amounts of money. The leaker replies, I'm actually inclined to agree that number may seem very high considering Bloomberg had them at number eight just last year. Their assets are iconic, hard to put a price on the IP. I hope the employees say no. Not sure if Gaben's wife would say no though. I mean, it seems like fan fiction from this person, but it's got everyone thinking. Once again, if Val were to get brought out, and you know, eventually one day, the good times will actually end, whether... Maybe Gabe does sell, he's ready to retire and, and he does it. Maybe he sells it in good faith, he sells it off to someone who he thinks is going to do a good job, but eventually someone is going to get their hands on Steam who is a bad actor, who's going to be a bit more nefarious. They might take Valve public, for instance, and then suddenly there's shareholders and they're demanding increased profits every single quarter. They don't care about the long-term health of Steam and all the money that could come in in the future. They don't give a toss about that. They only care about next quarter. What happens then? Well, you're going to see a, a lot of bad stuff with Steam. That's where you would see maybe those refunds end as they are right now because that's 
cutting into the bottom line. All that sort of stuff that I think would just see Steam turn to shit really, really fast. And there's other people debunking this as well. So Tom Warren, I, I believe he posts a lot of Microsoft stuff. He said, I can't believe I have to say this, but of course Microsoft isn't preparing an offer of 16 billion for Valve. Giving blue ticks to everyone was a bad idea. So basically no one is giving any validity to this rumor, which is good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that there's no truth in it. Fuck off, Microsoft. Just do your own thing, stuff up your own products, leave everyone else alone. There was this, though. Now, this Jez person, another Microsoft so-called insider, he weighed in on this and he started talking about even if that rumor of Microsoft buying Steam has any legs, UK regulators ain't going to let that happen. No way. I mean, who knows? Are the regulators just posturing and they're really in the pocket of these corporations? I don't really know, but... He did mention this, 100% Steam will be on the next Xbox. Now, this is a rumor that's been doing the rounds for much longer than this Microsoft buying Xbox one. There's been a lot of talk about Xbox is going third party, Steam is going to be on the Xbox. Even Phil Spencer himself talked about the Epic Game Store coming to Xbox. So there's been a fair bit of talk about it. I don't really understand it because if Xbox basically just becomes a budget Windows PC where you can download any Windows program it doesn't seem to have much purpose anymore. It's not really a console at that point. It's just maybe something really simple for people who want the console style interface but are essentially getting a PC. Maybe that's what they're trying to go for. I don't really understand this. If Steam went to Xbox, how does that work from a business standpoint? And someone sort of raises that concern in the comments. They say no one has given any type of explanation on how that would make Microsoft any money. Steam games are $20 cheaper than on the Xbox Store, and there's no pay-to-play multiplayer either. They would lose out on third-party sales, microtransactions, and online payment. And what he's saying makes sense. If you are logging into your Steam account on the Xbox and you buy a game on Steam... How is it going to be possible for Microsoft to get anything from that transaction? I don't really see how that could even happen. It also goes both ways. Even if somehow Microsoft were able to make money from every single Steam transaction, if you did it on Xbox, a Valve going to like the sound of that. That if you buy a game within your Xbox console, if you buy it through Steam, then you go to your PC, you continue playing the game, but Steam, Valve know, hey, we've made less money from that transaction because they bought it on their Xbox. Even talking about it, it feels convoluted and confusing, and it just doesn't make any sense. This Jez character's argument was, what if there's some kind of cut? It's not without precedent. Look at Green Man Gaming. Well, from what I understand, if you buy a PC game on this Green Man Gaming site, you're basically just buying a Steam key. It obviously makes sense that Valve could very easily monetize that and ensure they're getting a cut while this Green Man Gaming also makes money themselves. Seems way different than this Steam on Xbox situation, where if you buy the game through Steam, it's all through the Steam infrastructure, their payment processing. I don't really see how Microsoft could make any money. The only way I could see realistically is after you buy it on Steam, you, the paying customer, also have to pay a cut to Xbox. And that doesn't make any sense either, because then you'd go, well, I'll just buy the game on PC and then log in on the Xbox on my Steam account and avoid all of that sort of nonsense. I, I think if anything like this was true, because Steam on Xbox, it's more realistic than Microsoft buying Steam, if we're totally real. I think the reality here is this Jez person is deluded with this whole getting a cut of the money and all that. I think a lot of these people, they need to accept if Steam is on Xbox, the reason for that is Xbox is basically dead. And they would know themselves they're not going to get money from transactions and all of these different things. If Steam's on Xbox, that's it. It's your Steam account. Microsoft isn't getting any, any money there. If Xbox allowed that, I think it would be more just another tool to try and bring people into the Xbox ecosystem with the sole purpose of Game Pass once again. So it's like, yeah, we'll allow you to play your Steam games on Xbox, but if you want to play them much cheaper, 
you should subscribe to Game Pass. You should get involved in that. And I'm sure if you're on an Xbox console, even though it's basically a budget Windows PC at that point, if it's got Steam, if it's got Epic, they'll hit you with all of this advertising for Game Pass, all of that sort of stuff. But even a lot of leaks that have gone out have suggested if Microsoft stay in the console space, the Xbox console will be a very small part of their business. They'd basically be a third-party publisher. Xbox is there for maybe the enthusiasts, the super fans who still care about that. And really, it is just a Windows PC, which makes sense then why you would have Steam on it. And they'll probably price it to where they're actually making a profit, unlike a lot of the consoles that lose money. Sony doesn't care about making a profit on the PlayStation console because they're getting cuts of all the games, the microtransactions and so on. So I, I think that would be Xbox's future. This delusion about getting a cut of Steam sales, come on, that, that's never gonna happen. Right now, Xbox needs Steam a lot more than Steam needs Xbox. And I think in all of these situations, Steam, Valve, they'd be telling Microsoft to get fucked, whether it's trying to buy them for 16 billion, not even close to enough money, Steam getting put on the Xbox console, Valve would probably allow it, but if Xbox was trying to take money from that, I don't think that is going to work. Right now, at least PC gaming is in a good place. I hope Microsoft continue to stay away. Put your games on PC, put them on Steam, put them on your own storefront as well. I really don't care, but please stay out of trying to be a huge player in the industry, unless you're going to do it with your own infrastructure and be genuine competition. If you keep just trying to buy up what works, you're just going to turn it rotten. Thanks so much for listening. I'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Bye.